Hey guys, welcome back to Life with Queenie. So today I'm going to show you my very sad looking kitchen and I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done in pictures right now. So the backsplash, the tile over the kitchen sink, the backsplash by the um, stove. There are there are videos for the backsplash and the stove backsplash, so check the links down below. Okay, and yeah, let's get started. So what you're going to do first is remove all of the cabinet doors, remove all the hardware. Make sure you label them, okay? So label the hardware for each door. Sometimes they're adjusted just for that door, okay? All right, so we're going to remove everything. I do plan on giving the hardware um, away. Instead of throwing it away, someone else may like it. I just wanted to update my kitchen because it's a kitchen from the mid-2000s. So my house was built in 2005, so it's from, you know, that... I, wouldn't, I don't want to say time period. It sounds like it's like 100 years ago. But definitely not something that, you know, that I like. Um, there was a lot of damage to the cabinets, so we did sand them and wipe them off. You do not have to sand them if you use a primer that um, doesn't require sanding, okay? So it is optional. I did sand some of my cabinet doors and some of them I did not because I ended up using a primer that doesn't require sanding, okay? All right, so I did clean them off. Make sure you use something that cuts through grease and cleans them off completely. You want them grease-free. All right, I also have to let you guys know some of the painting of the cabinet I did while I was pregnant, so you are going to see me, you know, in different sizes. So in the beginning part of the video, I am pregnant. Um, I think I was maybe about five months or six months in one part, and in the other part, I was about seven months, okay? Um, I started filming this in the summertime and then I, you know, I, as I got bigger, um, with my baby, I got, you know, tired and too heavy and I just kind of put it aside and I said, I'll finish it after I give birth. So this is what you're watching right now. So this is when I started painting the cabinets that were attached to the wall while I was pregnant. You are going to need a foam roller, so a foam rolling brush. This is going to give you a nice, smooth texture. Even though my cabinets are solid wood, they do not have the um, the wood grain texture. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't have that, uh, it almost looks like hairs, I guess. It doesn't have that wood grain texture. They're very smooth, so... My cabinets came out really, really great. If your cabinets have the wood grain texture, there are videos that show you how to fill it in. It is some work, but it will be worth it in the end if you don't like the look of um, painted wood with the grainy texture, okay? All right, you guys. So as you can see, I am taping off my vent hood. I know I should have did it before even getting up there, but I had my tape with me, so I said, you know, if I need to tape anything off, I'll do it while I'm already up here, because I didn't want to have to go up and down constantly with my belly. It, it, it was a lot. All right, so I am just priming the cabinets right now with the Sincer Primer um, for all surfaces. It does not require sanding, and you make sure you let this dry. Do not be in a rush to go paint over this right away. Let it dry completely. I do recommend putting on one to two coats, okay, and thin coats. Don't glob it on there. Don't put on too much. It, It's not going to help. Just put on a nice thin coat and then put on a second one if you want to, okay? I did two coats because I use my kitchen a lot. That's why, all right? And again, you are going to need a foam roller, and this is going to give you a nice, smooth surface. Okay, it's the texture is going to come out nice and smooth. It's almost going to look like you used a paint sprayer to do it, which I did buy a paint sprayer. My husband used it to um, spray my garden fence, and it wasn't clean, so we're using a foam roller. Okay. Now here, I think, uh, I want to say I was seven months pregnant here, okay, and um, I started putting on the first coat of paint on the cabinets, 
and make sure you let the paint dry completely between coats. I ended up doing three coats of paint on the cabinets because I wanted a nice opaque look. Also make sure you have a decent paintbrush with you so you can get into little tiny corners. You cut the corners, you can do it before, after, during, whatever. So long as you go back over it with the roll, you will not see the brush strokes. Okay. I needed to use my brush to get in between that tiny space from the window frame and in this tiny space by the vent hood and the cabinet. So this side of the vent hood is just prime. So I'm cutting the corners before and then I'll go in with my paint roller and fill it in. And again, you guys, don't rush it. Let it dry completely. Let your primer dry completely. Follow the instructions on your primer, whichever brand you get. If it's a no sanding brand, follow the instructions. If you do sand your cabinets, you can just use a regular primer and, you know, follow the instructions, wait for it to dry, and then just paint. All right. Um, I actually remember doing this part of the cabinets. I was on live and... Some of my followers were freaking out because I climbed up on the um, countertop to paint the side of the cabinet. But um, I was okay. It was fine. You know. It was all right. I did get very tired after this. But, um, you know, I wanted to try and get as much of it done as I could before giving birth. All right. So, cabinet doors. So, what you're going to do is you see how um, the molding is on the door. You want to paint in this area first with a brush, and I'm using the Sensor Primer. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. They're not even paying me to say that, so whatever. But um, I do like the primer. It does a really good job. So I'm just going to prime my cabinet door first, and I'm getting into the molding first and then doing the smooth areas. You could do it with just a brush, or you can do it with the brush and the um, foam roller. You can use a foam roller, the tip of it, to get into the molding area, but um, I felt as though the brush was more convenient just to get into those areas, especially like the tight corners where they have like the miter cuts that come together and it's like an angle. Okay, so the brush really gets into that corner really, really good. Don't be scared to like kind of push your brush to get in there, okay? This way you don't have like these little dark shadows of, you know, of the old wood color peeking through, okay? And take your time again in a thin coat. I sped this part of the video up. Um, this part is, yes, I already had given birth. Okay, you guys, I already gave birth. Um... And I'm pretty sure you guys could probably hear her in some of the voiceover. So, you know, put on a nice thin coat on there. And again, like I said, let it completely dry. And then you're going to go in with your first coat of paint. So this is the most important part. You can't, you know, mess this up because it's going to be noticeable. All right. So what you're going to do, similar to what I did um, to priming the cabinet doors, you're going to use your brush and use a really good paintbrush. I got um, the, I guess the quality is called Good Paintbrush from Wally World. And did the molding area first. So the part of the door that is um, like molding. And then use my foam roller to paint the rest of it. I used canned goods. So canned goods to lift my cabinet doors off the countertop if you want to if you like your countertop cover your countertop with plastic paper whatever i do not care for my countertops i do plan on plant on i do plan on changing them so that's why there's no plastic on the actual countertop all right so as you guys can see i'm using the painting brush to get in the molding area of the cabinet door and try not to be tempted to do a thick coat of paint, okay? It's better to do multiple thin coats than to do one thick coat. Or else it's going to drip and it's not going to look good. Alright? 
So do thin coats, wait for them to dry, do another thin coat, do another thin coat. I actually did three thin coats. Oh, by the way, the paint that I use is the Alkid Enamel Paint from Bear, bright white. All right, sorry if I didn't mention that. I'll put the paints, the names of the paint, and the brand down below in the description box. This paint's formulated for high traffic areas and is perfect for cabinets and baseboards. All right, so here again, you guys see I did the corners first with the brush, and then I went in with my foam roller. And you see how nice and smooth it gets? You know, I know a lot of people worry about painting their cabinet doors and their cabinets because they don't want it to look like they did it themselves. They want it to look nice and uniform and airbrushed, and I totally understand. So if you want it to look like that, you're just going to have to have a little bit of patience and, you know, take your time. This part of the video is sped up, by the way. Um, the process for painting the cabinet doors took, I want to say, six hours. Okay, and that includes the waiting time for each coat to dry. As you guys could see, I'm using the foam rollers to do the sides of the door as well. And again, you can use canned goods to, you know, elevate your cabinet doors. Paint one side, make sure it's 100% dry before you turn it over, okay? So the part of the cabinet that's going to be facing outside, make sure your cabinet door is completely dry before you turn it over and rest it on the canned goods. If you are not 100% sure, just let it dry, okay? Because what can happen is the canned goods can get stuck onto the door and then it's going to you know, mess up the look of your door. It's going to have a circle, okay? So this is how the doors look. And I'm, I promise you guys, if you get the foam rollers, your doors, your cabinets are going to come out really smooth and really nice. I know, oh, by the way, some of you complain about me talking too much. Um, this is not one of those channels where I just order you around or whatever. I'm explaining to you what to do and I'm trying my best to encourage you to do it and be brave to do it. So if you don't like that, you can always exit out of this video, okay? All right, you guys, so this is how the doors look. During the day, um, I believe this was my last day of letting them dry, and I was finally able to hang them, which is the best part. I know you, you can't wait, and I couldn't wait either. All right, so you're going to put the hardware back on and the hinges, remember, the ones that you labeled, okay, and put them back in place. You're just going to need a screwdriver to do this. We actually went to a cabinet making, I guess, company business to get a quote on upper cabinets, right? For them to make us just these 12 inch cabinets, they told us $4,000. <laughs> I was a little shocked, honestly, but um, I said, okay, thank you. So the cabinet that I used right here above the vent hood, I actually got at one of the, you know, hardware stores, one of the popular ones, and I believe it cost me $30? Yeah. So I just got one of those and put it up there, and I do plan on doing upper cabinets. I just got to figure some things out, okay? Just so you guys know. Anyways, these are the handles I'm putting on. I absolutely love the hardware that I picked for my cabinets. It did take some time to find something I really, really like. So don't rush to get anything. Just find something you really like. Like we've, we've been living in this house for three years now. And for the last three years, I've just been looking at different things online. And, you know, before you make that big leap and purchase something, you know, just take your time, okay? Because sometimes you'll like something now and then in a few months you'll hate it and then realize you wasted your money. All right, so now I'm working on the kitchen island. As you guys saw, I did clean it off and then I got a little bored and then I drew an eyeball and... <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, it can get boring painting cabinets and islands. It, it gets boring, okay? But look whatever you know makes the time pass by fast okay so i'm doing one coat of the sincer primer no sanding required just make sure you clean everything get the grease off of it get a good cleaner i actually use a mixture of dawn soap and the um awesome 
cleaning solution and mix it in very hot water and cleaned off the bottom cabinets. And I also did a fingernail test or a scratch test on the cabinets after I primed it to make sure that it didn't peel, okay? So this is the first coat of paint. I'm not too concerned about the flooring because I do plan on changing the floor. So if you see paint go on the floor, it's, it's okay. I'm changing it. Um, I'm not breaking up the flooring. I'm going to do a peel and stick tile that I found that I love, 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 love. I just have to go and hunt for the rest of it because apparently it's very popular. And I was only able to find three boxes. So me and my husband are going to go on a little hunt to find the rest of our flooring and hopefully I can get that video out to you guys very soon. Alright, so as far as the drawers, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to use the the foam rollers, do the front part of the drawer first and then do the sides and kind of put it on an angle and then finish off your drawer. Make sure you prime the drawer, make sure you let it dry completely. Three thin coats of paint. Okay, if you want to do two, you can do two. I did three. Alright you guys, when I restarted painting my cabinets again, um, I actually used the same foam roller to do all of the bottom cabinets, all of the bottom cabinet doors, and all of the drawers, okay? The same foam roller. So one foam roller can take you a long way. Um, yes, I did use it on different days. So what you do is after you're done or you get tired or whatever from painting, Take a plastic, put your roller in there, put your brush in there, and wrap the end of the plastic around the um, handle of your foam roller and get a second one, put it in there, so this way your foam roller doesn't dry out. All right, you guys, so this is the faux drawer cover by my sink. It did not have holes for hardware, so I pretty much found the center of the... Um, or fake door cover, drawer cover, and um, went ahead and made holes myself to put on hardware. I felt as though it looked weird without anything on it. You know, like all the doors have new hardware. Like, why not put some on this fake drawer cover, okay? So, I did not have the drill bit that made the right size hole so I had to use my little drill bit and make the hole bigger by going in and out of it multiple times and then I used the screw and screwed it in a couple of times just to make sure the hole was perfect and then I attached it okay <laughs> I did use my tape measure as a hammer yes you did you did see that because I was too lazy to go into the garage all right, so there it is. It looks great. And now I have to put on these, um, I'm not exactly sure what you call this in like American English, um, slats, slats, I don't know. Anyways, they hold the door in place, the, the, the door, the cover in place underneath or behind the sink. Okay. So I had to keep making adjustments. So they kind of, turn once you put the cover the fake drawer cover back on they turn and hold it in place behind the sink cool isn't it I just found this out <laughs> I never knew that's how they did this but it makes a lot of sense that it makes a lot of sense because we want to take it off get to the sink then that makes a lot of sense all right so I had to you know give it multiple adjustments to get it right and get it tight in there and give it a little pull test and that was it I love how it looks it looks complete now it makes sense um, I also added some handles to the cabinet door above the vent hood because it did not come with hardware this is a already made cabinet that I bought in one of those popular hardware stores and I made the holes myself and put the hinges on and not the hinges the hardware handles on and that's it. So this is how the kitchen looks. I was trying to clean the fridge for you guys. Okay, I have three children, you know, pets, and they're always rubbing into the fridge. And I was trying to take the smudges off, but it was getting late and I was getting tired. I tried to make it look as decent as I could. And yeah, this is it, you guys. 
I still have to do the floors, I have to do the countertops, and I also have to add new lights above the kitchen island, but so far I am very happy with how the cabinets turned out. They're smooth and beautiful, not too shiny. By the way, the um, finish is a semi-gloss, so very easy to clean. Okay, very, very easy, which is important. And yeah, that's it. The link to the hardware is down below and products that I use, I'll have down below as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below and I'll see you very soon in another video. Love you guys. Bye.